tonight's show. Runfest at St. Augustine's in our match of the week. We find out more about the challenges facing UWC cricket. And great prizes up for grabs in Gavin's trivia. All this and more on tonight's edition of From the Clubhouse. Welcome to From the Clubhouse, the show that looks at amateur cricket in the Western Cape. This week we'll be taking a look at quite a couple of things. One of them, how to play the most elegant shot in cricket. We also catch up with the University of the Western Cape to find out exactly how they are coping in light of the recent protest action and their cricket team also having to uh, practice and play their games away from their home field. But before that, uh, let me just welcome the panel first of all. Gavin Ahrens, welcome once again. It's lovely to have you. Thank you very much, Brandon. Uh, it's nice to be here. What a treat. I was out at cricket this weekend over at uh, St. Augustine's uh, following the township side in the under 23 hubs competition. What a treat we had. Huge scoring game in the first innings and um, brilliant cricket overall. I'm looking forward to hearing about that because that excites me. I want to know all about, especially that township 11. Clinton Dupree, welcome once again. How are you doing? Always good to be back and it's good to be next to the two of you again. And yes, we were out this weekend also at, at club cricket fixtures and it's, it's great to see that clubs are really um, competing and, and, and finishing off the game before they get to the, the round of one day cricket um, next weekend and then also with the Western Cape Schools Youth Meeting taking place on Friday at the Cobras game with some exciting news coming up for, for this upcoming weekend. The other exciting thing is, I don't know how you want to look at it as well, it could be exciting, it could not be exciting. We're in the last couple of weeks before the Christmas break as well, so I'm sure a lot of guys are looking forward to just having a break and not being out there every Saturday in the pounding sun and just taking that break before they get back to uh, actually playing. Talking about playing, let's talk cricket. Gentlemen, I want to get to, first of all, the Cobras. They got a win under the belt in uh, Paul this past weekend. But, you know, with the good seems to come the very bad as well. Racked by injuries, Gavin. Let me first do that, shoo, about that game in Paul. It was close, but we managed to, uh, as I read in the media, and some people prefer to put it, crawl over the line. But you know what? Um, we've, we're a depleted side, uh, lost a lot of players to the uh, national setup. And as you quite rightly say, injuries played. Uh, also, we've just lost um, another player. I believe Pollard has gone back uh, for national duty. So more depleted side, the Cobras, uh, three more games left uh, in the competition. Will they make it? Well, they're in third position now after this weekend's performance, firstly on Friday evening. Um, against the log leaders, the um, the unlimited titans. What a game we had, Newlands. I didn't think in the afternoon that any uh, play was going to be possible, but it turned out quite a, a pleasant evening we were here at Newlands. And uh, kudos again to um, that man, uh, Richard Levy, uh, hitting quite a few sixes and uh, exciting the crowd. But at the end of the day, uh, falling short. Um, then Sunday's game in Paul, the one where we quite literally crawled over the line. You know, I always say whether it be football, whether it be rugby, whatever the, the sport is, if on a bad day you you manage to scrape a win, that's a hallmark of a quality side, especially a depleted quality side. At the end of the day, what will the record book say? It will say you won. So it doesn't matter if it was by one run or a hundred runs, at the end of the day you won. But on that note, you were talking about uh, Pollard and you were talking about him going back for national duty. I have it on good authority that there's no national duty going to be taking place because he's out for four months with a knee injury. Four months, knee injury, I, I believe so as well. But um, you know what? You take the, the good with the bad. And I believe that Paul, in his setup, have players who are really just in rearing to step up as well. A, a good squad of players. So here's hoping at the end of the day, in a competition like this, especially in a depleted side, the important thing is uh, to make the semi final and then build from there. Clinton, that's where I want to bring you in. Uh, Gavin is talking now that Paul has the, the, the reserves and the stock. You think Paul's going to start uh, raiding that first class side because, you know, he's got, he's got Robin Peterson out, he's got uh, George Linder out, he's got Pollard out now, he's got, I think, uh, who's, who's there's uh, Levy's out as well, uh, amongst others. So he's surely going to have to start looking at some of those other guys that are just on the fringe or on the cusp of coming up and probably bringing them up and giving them exposure. 
No, I would rather say that he's looking at giving other guys an opportunity. And there's some players who's, who's taking claim for those positions. In the past weekend, you see a Sametu, who came from province, hails from province, and back at the SWD for game time. Looks in good shape and looks in good space as well. The likes of Keegan Peterson from Boland, they're all around. I mean, these guys are all putting up, up their hands for opportunity. And there's also the players coming back from injury, the likes of Buren Hendricks, who will now be playing for the, for the first class side against Gauteng. In, in the game this weekend. Also, he's released um, Umpile Ramela to play for, for, the, for, the, co for the first class side. And Otsepo Moreki will be playing for the first class side. Even Dejan Khalim from the under 19 Coke side yeah. is part of the squad for the weekend. So it's good to see how these players are getting the opportunity. Peter Molan is back for the side as well as captaining and also captaining the side for this weekend. It's good to see them back. Tari Chikte has had a very, very good run. So Paul has all these avenues of looking at, and together with Salih and the high performance program, Faik as the coach, um, Johan Lowe as the first class coach, and, and Andre Duplessis at SWD. The opportunity is always there for him to really tap in this process. And the, the high performance that we have and the programs that we're running, I think it's quite strong. It's just to identify those players, bring them through, and get the necessary, necessary exposure on, on those platforms. It's interesting you should mention Dayan, because we spoke to him last week as well uh, when they had their capping ceremony. Uh, but he's a schools player, uh, and, and he's getting that exposure now as well to play at that level. And you've got a schools week coming up as well. A couple of those guys will probably also be, if they, if they really put in a good performance, they'll get a look in sometime soon. No, for sure. I mean, at, at a stage um, on, on good authority, we heard that the young might get called up for the SAA side. And um, so this is the, the, the growth of this boy and, and the progress he's made. And we all know he's a talented boy. Um, I'm not too sure um, which part of the games will be com competing in for the first class side. But definitely having him around. He played in the T20 recently in, in the game at, at Newlands for the first class side. And it's good to see that they're getting the opportunity. And there's more in the Coke side. And there's more players out there that need that exposure and needs a platform to really showcase their talent. But uh, you're saying you don't know where he's going to fit in. I think they should let him fit in and be the death bowler. Because that, that was where he really made a name for himself. Two runs off and over and uh, they still won that game. So maybe, maybe he can be the new uh, Langerfeld, you know, coming through. Because we, we're needing someone to bowl at the death for us. And Gavin, just getting looking at, at the Cobras again now, we, we're getting a couple of games under the belt. But they, 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 they're or there about. Do you think it's as a result of not being able to put out a consistent 11 game in, game out to get some momentum? Uh, well, it, it always, the, the more you can put out that consistent um, 11, the better your chances of doing well. And it, the converse is true. You're going to put out that consistent 11 if you are doing well at the same time. But, uh, I mean, we've discussed it already. There's so many injuries and now a few more injuries coming into the side. It's, uh, it's not possible always to do it. And going back to my earlier statement, in, in competition time, it's important to be there and there about in times like these. I mean, we've had seasons gone by where the Cobras just uh, swept the floor uh, with, the, with the consistency, not just in terms of... Um, in terms of the squad but also in terms of the first 11 as well as the results this year it's a bit more difficult and we're still up there so uh, th that's where the squad system really comes in and, and and make it possible it's important to make it through to playoffs in seasons like this and that's i think where the cobras are pitched at the moment it's that time of the week again where we take a look at gavin's trivia and if you're in the mood to win some lovely and tasty cakes i suggest you draw nearer to take a listen and find out maybe you can answer gav's trivia gavin what do you have for us this week Thank you, Brandon. Uh, before we get into this week's trivia question, let me just remind you of what happened last week. The question for last week was, who's the last Proteus player to have opened both the batting and the bowling in a test match? The answer, of course, Vernon Philander. As so many have got it right on uh, Facebook and uh, all our other social media platforms, some saying Big Vern. Those are all accepted. We'd like to give you the cake voucher. Our winners this week, well done to Anise Adams. Uh, you've got a 250 Rand cake voucher coming your way, courtesy of Made by Mom. As well as Javon Kluter, you also have won a 250 Rand cake voucher, courtesy of Made by Mom. Now, for this week's trivia question, it's going to be cricket related, and I'm sure I'm going to get you scratched a little bit um, the question is quite simple in how many ways can a batsman be dismissed in cricket uh, for this week's answer please um, put it on our Facebook uh, that's just for, from the clubhouse or you can leave it on Twitter that's at clubhouse underscore TV or just email it through to us at info at from the clubhouse a reminder again of the prize that you win you win one of two 250 Rand cake vouchers courtesy of made by mom cakes remember every cake tells the story. Brandon, it's not an easy one, is it? Definitely not. I can only think of the ways I got out. Well, the, the, there are the, uh, you got out in all those five ways. Um, yes. 
Oh, I can think of a few more. Did you just give the answer? No, but what I'm telling you is don't think of the five obvious ones. There might be more. Your answers, please, on our social media platforms. In fact, you have to think of the five obvious ones and then also the others that Gav has, uh, you know, uh, tried to catch you out with. So they must think of the obvious ones. Just as a matter of interest, did you ever step on your wicket? Uh, that's one thing I didn't do. That's one thing I do. LBW, caught, stumped, and uh, bold. That was... Yeah. That was basically my cricketing career uh, and you know what getting stumped was quite one of my because I always forgot I used to get out the crease and forget to put my foot back into the crease so that was one of the more common ones for me yeah look I'm, I'm a bowler and from my perspective I hate it when batsmen obstructed my field it just blew me away mm -hmm. giving clues again giving clues there we go. That's your, those are your clues for today. Uh, there are a lot more ways to uh, get out in cricket. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Gavin. I'm sure we're going to see lots of traffic, especially going into the festive season. Now, someone's going to be wanting to get that cake. You know, Christmas coming up as well. Mm, exactly. Coming up after the break, we have our game of the week. This week, it's the under-23 hub side from St. Augustine's, and they are up against the Township 11. I'm Matthew Gullis from Cape Town Cricket Club, and we're watching from the clubhouse.